up everyone? This is Elijah with The Rideshare Guy. And in this video, we're gonna be giving a visual tutorial on how to complete a Uber Eats delivery inside this video, as well as how to complete the sign up process so that you can start accepting Uber Eats delivery requests. The first thing that you will need to do to accept Uber Eats requests is to make sure that you actually have the Uber Driver app downloaded. Now, before we officially begin, we do need to deal with two scenarios that you'll be encountering based on what situation you're in. If you've never driven for Uber, period, then that means you don't have an account with them. You'll wanna click on the link in the description and also the pinned comment to officially sign up for Uber so that you'll be able to log into the Uber driver app and begin the next phase of the sign up process. Now, if you're already signed up for Uber and you have the Uber driver app, you're clear to go on to the next phase. Some people think that the Uber Eats app is necessary to download in order for you to receive Uber Eats requests, and that's not true. All you need is the Uber driver app. The Uber Eats app is strictly just for customers. Although it is actually pretty useful in developing certain strategies, but that topic is covered in other videos discussing Uber Eats. We're gonna stick to the tutorial for today. Now, if you already have an Uber account and you've been driving rideshare, there is an option to add Uber Eats as an option for you to start receiving Uber Eats requests. You just gotta follow the instructions that are on the screen right now. Once you've gained access to the Uber app, you wanna click on the bars in the top left-hand corner and click on help. Once you've clicked on help, you wanna click on the a guide to driving and delivering. Once here, click on receiving requests. I want to choose which types of trip or delivery requests to receive. Scroll to the very bottom and say opt in to deliver with Uber Eats, United States, or Canada if that applies to you. It should be noted that what you see on the screen can change depending on what region that you're in, but as long as Uber Eats is available in this region, you should see the option to opt in to Uber Eats requests. Just click on that option and follow the instructions. It may take a few hours to a day before you're actually registered to start seeing Uber Eats requests, so don't be surprised if you don't see them immediately. Now that we're officially signed up to receive Uber Eats requests, we can go ahead and move on to the next phase, which is receiving requests. And once you get a request that you like, accepting it, picking up the food, and the drop-off process. So let's move over to the next phase. Once you're ready to start receiving requests, click the go button and you'll be taken online. From here, you can start receiving Uber Eats requests. Now let's briefly go over some things that you'll see on the map. The little house icons represent different hotspots that are busy at the time. You have the option to click on start to navigate and Uber will bring up your default navigation to navigate you to that hotspot. But it's a way that you can keep track of the activity that's going on on the map at that time. If you scroll down to the bottom and click on the tracks icon, you can control what requests you can have coming in if you are opted in to accept more than one type of trip. For instance, I'm opted in to receive rideshare requests and deliveries, but at any point I can turn off deliveries or turn off rideshare and just do one of them. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll be focusing on deliveries. After you've gone online, eventually you'll get a delivery request. The delivery request will give you 15 seconds to accept and will show the following information. It'll show the estimated time that it'll take for the delivery to be completed, the mileage, the delivery restaurant, as well as the drop-off location, both in map form and the actual address. It's important to note that the mileage is taken into account the drive to the restaurant and to the drop-off. It's not taking into account any kind of driving back to a place, so you wanna keep that in mind before you accept the request. If you would like to accept the delivery request, just click on where it says delivery and the request will be accepted. If you would like to decline it, just hit the X icon at the top of the screen, or you can let the request time out. After 15 seconds, the request will automatically time out. There is a different type of request that you can receive though. This is known as trip radar. Trip radar is basically a timed event where this request goes to all of the immediate drivers in the area and whoever accepts it first is the person that will get it. The trip radar screen works a little different from a normal request. The information you're given varies slightly. You'll be able to see multiple requests on trip radar and you'll only be able to see the address of the restaurant and also the address of the drop-off location. 
You won't be able to see it on the map at the time of the recording of this video. So that's something to take into consideration if you do choose to accept the request using Trip Radar. As mentioned before, if you don't accept the request fast enough, there's a good chance that another driver will accept it and the request will no longer be available. When a Trip Radar request pops up, you can see the amount of people who are looking at it at that direct time by looking at the eye icon next to the word delivery. If you would like to deny the Trip Radar request, just click the X button at the top left hand corner. Once you accept the request, the screen will change to what you see in front of you. It will give you a navigation map and the ability to navigate to the restaurant. It will also show how far away you are from the restaurant. If you select the time and mileage and move your finger up on your phone, it will give you some additional information, such as any notes that the restaurant has left for you as a driver, such as in this case, pick up in the lobby. You'll also be able to see the order number, the person's name, and any details about the order that you need to know as a delivery driver. If you need to contact the restaurant for some reason, you can hit the call icon on the screen and it'll bring up a phone number that you can use to get in contact with the restaurant. If you need to contact Uber Eats support for some reason, just click on the explanation point in the bottom left hand corner and hit call support. This button can also be used if you need to cancel the delivery. Canceling during the pickup phase will reassign it to another driver. Just put the reason that you're canceling, and if it isn't listed, just say issue not listed. Keep in mind that canceling at any point after you've actually picked up the food and you're in the drop off phase will result in your cancellation rate increasing, and a high cancellation rate can be grounds for deactivation. Once you arrive on this screen, you want to go ahead and navigate your way to the restaurant. Once you're at the restaurant, you want to go in and pick up the order. Be sure to give them the order number as well as the name. In particular, the order number because sometimes there may be two robbers, for instance. So this will make sure that the restaurant is giving you the right order. You can also click on details and you'll be able to see what the customer ordered. This is very important just in case they happen to order drinks. So you want to make sure that the restaurant did not forget to include them because sometimes they do. If the order is not ready when you arrive, just click on the not ready button and the staff will be notified on their Uber Eats screen that their delivery driver has arrived. Once you picked up the food and you're back in your car, you can give the restaurant a thumbs up if everything went well, or if you encounter some unneeded issues, you can give them a thumbs down. Click on confirm pickup and you'll be taken to the next phase, which is the drop off phase. Once you've entered the drop off phase, a map will appear showing you where the drop off place is supposed to be. You want to go ahead and navigate your way to the drop off place. Once you've arrived, there'll be instructions you'll need to follow in order to complete the drop off. If there's any particular instructions that your customer has for you, they will be on this screen. If at some point during this drop off phase, you decide that you don't want to accept any more delivery requests and you want to go offline after this is finished, just click on the bars in the bottom right hand corner and that will take you to this screen where you can click on stop new requests. If you click on this, you'll be taken offline as soon as this delivery is completed and you won't receive any more delivery requests while you're on this delivery. In general though, you'll encounter one of three types of drop-offs. There's the leave at door drop-off, the deliver to door drop off and the wait in the car drop off. The leave at door is the option that most people are picking nowadays and it just means that you're going to leave the order on the customer's doorstep. If you get this type of drop off request, a good habit I have is to shoot the customer a message basically letting them know that I've dropped off their food and I thank them for using Uber Eats as their delivery service of choice. This does two things. First, it does let the customer know that their food is about to be dropped off, but it also initiates a timer. This is more critical in the other two delivery methods that I'm about to cover, but it helps in terms of if you need to cancel a delivery. That's not really applicable here though. So once I send the message, I follow the instructions on the screen to take the picture as proof that I dropped off the food at this address. On a side note, if you can, you want to try and make sure that you capture the full address in the picture that you take. That way it's just further proof that you did complete the delivery for this customer, leaving it at that address. It's important to note that I don't recommend you ever choose to skip the photo because the customer could say that they didn't get it and you know that could cause troubles for you as a driver. Once you've taken your photo, just submit the photo 
and click on deliver. And if you need to retake it, you can click on retake. If you want to view the photo, click on view photo. And if everything is good, click on deliver and the order has officially been dropped off and completed. Let's briefly cover the other two scenarios because they're more or less pretty similar to the leave it door option. If someone has instructions to deliver to door, all that means is instead of taking a picture, you're just gonna ring their doorbell or knock on the door and they're gonna physically accept the food from you. The other situation you may run into is the wait at car option. That basically means that the customer is gonna come meet you at your car and they'll leave instructions on where they want you to be. Probably the easiest type of uh, drop off in my opinion, you just follow the instructions, wait in the car and they'll come down and they'll come and get the food from you. Now let's briefly cover what should you do if you can't get in contact with the customer and you can't complete the delivery process. This doesn't really matter for the leave a door option because you're gonna be leaving the food at the door anyway. This comes into play when the customer selected the deliver to door option or meet at the car option. The first thing you wanna do is shoot them a message because they'll initiate that timer like we talked about earlier in the tutorial. After that, you do have the option to give them a call to see like what the situation is, but this actually isn't mandatory. The message will initiate the cancellation process, so a call is completely up to you. But once you have waited eight minutes, the option to cancel the order without penalty and still get paid will appear on your phone. You just click on cancel delivery and then you'll be paid for the order. Now that we've covered cancellation in general, I do want to discuss exactly what do you do with the food if a cancellation does occur. And that's going to really depend on a certain scenario. The scenario being like, what did the customer ask for you to do in terms of drop off? If they ask you to leave it at the door, you're not going to really have a real reason to cancel for the most part. So you're probably just going to leave it at the door. But if they say delivers the door, meaning that they need to actually physically accept the food, open the door, and you go through the whole process and they still were unavailable, Uber will then tell you to leave it in a safe place, which the safest place you can probably leave it is you know, in front of their door. So you want to leave it there. But the last option is if they want you to wait in the car and they'll come down to pick it up. So let's say they're at some kind of a apartment unit in some kind of skyscraper on the 36th floor and they say they'll come down and um, get it off you from the car. You wait the time limit that you need to wait in order to cancel the order and they don't come down. You try calling them, you can't get a hold of them. Well, in that case, exactly what safe place can you leave it? There isn't a safe place. Assuming you don't know what unit that they're staying in, you can't leave it in their front door. So it can really only go in one of three places. You can throw it in the trash, you can give it to a homeless person, or you can deposit it in your stomach. I say do whichever one you see the most fit, but if it's been a long day and that food is kind of my cup of tea, so to speak, I think it's pretty obvious where it's gonna go. But that's the only circumstance where I wouldn't leave the food in a safe place because it just isn't really an option. In other cases, I would just leave it at their front door if I had to cancel. And if you do end up doing this, I recommend that you take a picture of it and try your best to get the address in the same shot as where you're leaving the food. That way you have proof that you did leave it in fact in front of their door. Upon completion of a delivery, you may notice that the pay amount that you saw on the accept screen is not the same that will appear. That's because tips don't kick in until an hour after the delivery has finished. That means that one hour from when the delivery is finished, you'll see the full amount that you earn from that trip, including the tip. One thing that I like to do that really helps to encourage more tips from customers is to go to my earnings dashboard and go to my deliveries and you have the option to send a thanks for a tip the customer is notified that you sent them a thanks for tip and that helps to encourage them to leave more tips because if they're getting thanked for tipping, it just shows that us as drivers are grateful. So that's something that I'm going to encourage more drivers to do because it's something that, that will help all of us you know, make more money. Finally, we'll cover some of the icons on the home screen. The coffee mug icon is actually the icon you can press to pause your request and take a break. This means that requests will not come your way until you hit the mug icon again to go back online. And if for some reason you feel the need to contact the authorities, you can click the shield icon in the left hand corner. This will bring up the option to dial 911, as well as a few other safety options. 
That completes our Uber Eats driver tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment section below for us. And if you would like to see a video that will take your Uber Eats driver earnings to the next level, you can click the card in the right hand corner right now and you'll be taken to a video that will help you make more ching when it comes to Uber Eats via tactics. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified next time we drop videos about the gig economy in general. And if you found value in this video, if you can give us a like, it's very much appreciated. This has been Elijah with the Rideshare Guy. I'll catch you in the next video. Be safe. Be profitable, everyone.